Okay, guys, you see what I'm talking about? Now, this is a 45-degree angle, and it's cut so that the back of it will come in straight, and we'll have a flush surface here. Now, what, you, what you're going to find is, let's go to the table saw real quick. One way to keep yourself oriented is that you'll notice on this one where I have the top marked. This is the top of the bottom case. When I run this, I'm running it with the top portion toward the back of the table saw. To run the mate, I'm going to run the top portion to the front of the table saw, completely opposite, because we got a left and a right. Let's look. All right, we already know this one's working. Now we have to make sure we have our mate. And we do. See, that's going to come in there just right and create a flat back. See that ugly spot? I got enough. I probably got two inches. I'm going to run this again and knock that out of there. I like to avoid ugly whenever I can. The mirror in the morning is an issue, but... Now I'm going to run my uppercase. Now the first thing now I'm going to repeat myself. Data is up always. dado for the very top of it, again, was away from the table saw. It was to the back of the table saw. So, when I run this one, I want the back, or the top rather, toward the front of the table saw. Completely opposite, and that will place us, give us our correct left and right. All right, that wasn't too difficult, was it? Now, we're going to go back to 90 degrees. face edge, which is 90 degrees, and uh, 
this is my final cut on this and so that'll put it where we want it to be. I better get a pencil before I even start because I know I ain't got one. And uh, I got felt pencil holders. That, and uh, why don't you get something here to keep your host your, your pencils in? Well, I should. That makes but that makes too much sense. All right, flush with my back. Now, one of the things you're going to notice with me. I measure, but not as much as you think. There's a, you know, them tape measures, them things will lie to you. <coughs> they do me anyway. All right. I'm a 22 and 3 quarter plus a 16th, whatever that amounts to. So I'm going to set this at 22 and 7 eighths. Let's sneak up on that thing. I'm gonna be sure. Again, data's up. And the reason I want the data's up is I don't want this sharp edge getting under that fence. That's dead on the money. Well, let me see. Wait a minute now. That could actually be a skosh wider. Now, I measure 22. Let's see, how many sixteenths is in three quarters? Two, four. Well, you're right. So I actually measured it uh, 13 sixteenths, but I went to 7 eighths, and I'm still a little short. Now, why would that be? I mean, I've checked my fence, and it was pretty good, but just a little bit ago, I switched to another blade, and it could be just that little bit of variance. So what I did was I cut a little wide just to make sure I had it right, and then double-checked it's a good thing I did. Now it's it's right it's there, but it could use a thirty second more. So the only thing I got to do is move my fence and roll through. But there again, that comes into that sneak up on it thing. That's the best advice I can ever give you. Don't trust nothing, and check and double check everything. And actually using your pieces as you go to double check everything that makes sure you got it right that's why i told you i don't like plans and if you are going to i don't mind plans it's just that don't go through and try to cut all the pieces and expect everything to fit <laughs> We got one more thing to do guys and we're going to build a corner cabinet or carcass anyway come back and i'll show you okay to put this together i'm going to be using a one and a half inch 
coarse thread, washer head, square drive screw. <laughs> to get that one and a half coarse thread, washer head, square drive. But I want to I want to pre-drill the holes in the panels, in the sides, not in the shelves. Now you see me talk about this. I, I'm going to say it again. When you drill a hole for a screw, you want that screw to be able to pass through it. When it does that, that screw pulls really, really tight. If it's threading in the hole that you drilled, then what will happen is the screw goes in and when it engages the piece of wood behind it, it tries to push it away. Now, I'm going to say this. I'm using a one and a half inch now. And I'm probably not, I'm just going to get this case stuck together so I can check everything and get on with the face frame. Odds are, if I decide to go with screws all the way, then what I will do is I'll come back and probably put an inch and three quarter in it or something like that, a little bit longer because we're going in the end grain. What you want to do is just drill your four holes in each dado. You can get in there and mark them and do all that. I just drill them. Kind of close as I can get. Now be careful. Because your angle right here, you don't want to get too close out there. Same thing on the front where it's 90 degrees. If you get too close in here, when you screw it into that shelf, you can try to split your shelf. The other thing I do is after I've drilled them, just to make sure there's no little fuzzies from the drill, I always take a little piece of sandpaper and just stuff right over top of my screw holes. That makes sure that there's nothing in there, and of course, make sure before we put it together, we clean out the data real well. Okay, so we got some holes to drill, so let's get to it. Now, why am I drilling from the inside? That's simple. I can see the center of the dado, and if I get a little bit in that washer head, the same thing in the back, if I get a little bit of a blowout back there, back there, not back there, well that's the way you say it, but you guys understand back there. I get it right? I think so. Anyway, then that washer head will cover it. But again, it's the back. You know, you see some of these old antique corner cabinets, antique anything, come think of it. Man, the box on them thing are rough. If I'm doing one and I really want to give it a nice old antique flavor, after I've got all this done, I'll take a block plane and go over the inside very light. On the back of it, I'll even take a scrub plane. And man, I just, yeah, it ain't pretty. That's the way they left them. You know, again, if you didn't see it, these old guys didn't worry about it. But then again, they didn't have planers and, you know, sanders and everything was old school. And every now and then, that's fun to do. Matter of fact, I've been kind of thinking about a project that we do that on. All right, I'm going to get my holes drilled. We'll come back and put it together. Here we go. We're going to put this thing together. Now when you're doing this, usually I have somebody helping help me a little bit, but can't do that right now because they're manning the camera. But anyway, what you want to do is get your front flush. See if I can get enough hand in here to do this. Oh yeah, looks pretty good. Slipped a little bit on me. That's okay. Now, if I was putting this together for good, I'd probably actually take a little 
finishing nail or a pen nail, and I'd probably just nail that thing a little bit, just enough to keep me right where I want to be. And it's always this first side that's the tough one. That's also the advantage of having that hole drilled where that screw moves through freely because I can actually just push it back up and into place. Now, in the event, get your front flush. In the event that you wind up with a little bit of something not just perfect here, we can take a hand plane and just square that right away. That's not going to be a big issue. I went pretty good. Let me check the other. This one will be a lot easier because I ain't got to be holding everything and wrestling it around as much. I'm going to spin this around real quick just so you can see what I've got inside here to help me hold it. I've just got a couple L-shaped call scraps made up just to kind of help hold those shelves up a little bit while I work on them. All right. See what happened to that screw, see what it did? I must not have got that hole all this tight. And I'm going to pull it right out of my hand. Let me grab another one real quick. Guess what, guys? Mm -hmm. 
other than throwing claws all over the place, we got the beginnings of a corner cap. Get her up here. Now, there'll be our center shelf right here. So the one butterfly shelf that we did that don't have any um, plate groove in it, that's where it's going to go. I'm looking for that shelf that's got that oops on it. Here. I'm going to hide that bad boy right up in here. And Angle Biden will know I got an oops unless y'all tell him. Like I told you before. I doubt this will be the only one we have. This is a lot easier to fit laying on his back. So I'll do that in a minute. There it is. It's always the last one you're looking for, huh? So this is going to set in here like so. And as you can see, you know, when you open those doors, it's very pretty in there. Alright, that's all I need to worry about on this one for now, because the next thing I'm going to do once I got this is make sure everything is right and everything's fitting good, is I'm going to come back and I'm going to double see how we want to do about getting the interior painted. Alright, remember I told you it's easier to do this sitting on its back, much easier. So far, so good. I'm going to go ahead and just stick one little screw in here just to hold everything. Now you notice here on the bottom I had a little place in the wood, but I stuck it down underneath. I could have cut it out, but that meant I had to actually gone and used the <laughs> plane to hold another board. So I just had it. <laughs> another one of them birthmarks. Like I told you, I guarantee you we'll have more than a few in it. That's kind of what it's going to be looking like. Shaping up. See our drawer's going to go in here. So. What's that?
All right, time to get to the top of two. We're only halfway there. All right, doing the exact same thing. I'm going to put the upper unit together. So, we come back, we'll have it done. Okay, we got a carcass up. Now, we're ready for the face frame. We're ready to get all that pretty tiger maple put together and get it on the front of this and get it, get it built. You know, I've been playing a little bit already and because I want to work out a really nice finishing schedule for you, something that you'll be able to get your hands on and do. And uh, as you can kind of see here, I've been playing. I think this is the one we're going to use, and when we get to that point, I'll show it to you. I just thought I'd kind of let you know that that's what I'm doing. I like to figure out my finishing ahead of time so I make sure I got what I need. And... Uh, it's going to work out nice. Okay. Next episode, we're going to start building the face frame and give this thing looking like a corner cabinet.